Welcome Embedded Engineers! This video is part of a tutorial series on developing web dashboards for embedded devices. In this episode, we will create a dashboard page for network settings to enable and disable DHCP, set IP address, netmask, and default router. We will make these settings saved persistently on a device. And we also implement the functionality behind it. In other words, if DHCP is enabled, a device will get the IP address automatically. If it is disabled, we will set the IP address manually. In each episode, we use a different development board to demonstrate that Mongoose works across a variety of hardware platforms. Today we'll be using the TeamC 4.1, which is based on the NXP IMXRT1062 microcontroller. It features a Cortex-M74 running at 600 megs, 1 megabyte of RAM, nearly 8 megabytes of flash, and 4 kilobytes of emulated EEPROM memory. Plug in the dev board to your workstation, connect it to Ethernet and visit mongoose.ws. Click on the big blue button that takes you to the Mongoose wizard, a visual dashboard builder. Start a new design from scratch. If you don't see this dialog, then click on the new button. Select target directory, where a generated project will be stored. Select target architecture, TNC 4.1. Click Next. Select the blank dashboard, click Next, and click Finish. Click on Generate Code. Now Wizard has created an Arduino project with that blank dashboard in the target directory. Let's open it in the Arduino IDE. Rebuild and refresh. Look at the logs to find the board's IP address. Load it in the browser. This is the same dashboard we saw in the wizard, now served by our TNC device. Click on Settings and change the integration mode to existing project. So the next time we synchronize changes to the target directory, wizard will not override changes we have made in the project. Let's design a simple dashboard with two pages. The first page is going to show information cards with device name, DHCP mode, and current IP address. Leave the values unchanged for now. The second page will display two panels, network settings and general settings. In network settings, we will include a DHCP toggle. If DHCP is enabled, the router will automatically configure the IP settings. Otherwise, they must be specified manually. For manual setup, we will provide text fields for the IP address, network mask, and default gateway. Let's create a REST API to back this panel. If you haven't watched the videos on RESTful API basics, we recommend checking out the LED tutorial video and the REST API tutorial video. Now we will create an API endpoint called Network Settings, which includes a Boolean field DHCP, along with three other fields, IP address, type string, size 20, default value 1111. Gateway address, type string, size 20, default value 2222. And netmask, type string, size 20, default value 43s. Back to the panel, specify API references for DHCP, IP address, gateway address, netmask, and the save button. Enable autosave for the DHCP toggle. Automatically disable the IP address, network mask, and gateway fields when DHCP is enabled. To test this, go to the API editor, set the default DHCP value to true, and verify that the fields are disabled. Now add the second panel for general settings, with only one field, device name. Create a second API to back this panel, call it general settings with one field called device name, type string, size 20, default value, my device. Back to the panel, specify API reference for the text field and for the save button. Switch to the dashboard page and set the correct display for the cards. Device name, use an expression that expands to the current API variable value. DHCP, Use an expression that displays different text depending on the value of the HCP attribute, either disabled or enabled. IP address. Use an expression as well. 
Our dashboard is now ready. Click the Generate Code button to synchronize changes to the target directory. Rebuild and refresh. Then refresh the browser. You should now see the dashboard. We can view and change values. But they are currently tied to the default API handlers, which use mock variables to simulate the hardware. These mock variables are stored in RAM, meaning that if we restart the device, the settings reset to their defaults and are not stored persistently. Let's define our own API handlers and connect the dashboard to the real hardware. First, let's start with the easy part, the device name. Open src mongoosglue.c, which contains the default API handlers. Copy-paste the general settings handlers into the sketch file. Rename them to my get general settings and my set general settings. Now, instead of using a mock variable, we should store the data structure permanently. To save settings permanently, we need persistent memory, such as internal or external flash, or EEPROM, or an SD card. Additionally, the device development environment should provide an API for storing data, such as raw flash access, a file system API, or an EEPROM API. This Teensy board features emulated EEPROM, backed by external flash. The Arduino core provides an EEPROM API for saving and loading data, which is exactly what we will use to store our settings. We have two functions available, EEPROM read, which reads one byte from a given address, and EEPROM write, which writes one byte to a given address. We need to store and load more than one byte. So let's create two helper functions for reading and writing larger buffers. A helper function load reads a buffer from a given address, and a helper function save stores a buffer on a given address. We have two structures to store in EEPROM, network settings and general settings. Let's define general settings address as zero, placing it at the beginning of the EEPROM. Next, we'll define network settings address, offset by the size of the general settings structure. Remove the mock variable for the general settings. In my get general settings, load the structure from EEPROM. In my set general settings, save the structure. Right after the mongoose init, call mongoose set HTTP handlers to replace the handlers for general settings with our own. Rebuild and refresh the device. Then reload the dashboard. Initially, you may see a random data from whatever was previously stored in EEPROM. Now you can enter a new device name and save it. After rebooting the device, the changes persist. Let's do the same for the network settings. Copy the default handlers, modify them, and load stored data from EEPROM. Rebuild and refresh, then reload the dashboard. Now we can change the network settings too, and they persist, but they are not actually applied to the device. Let's do this final step. Create a helper function set IP configuration that would apply the network settings. In the setter handler, use MG timer add to delay applying the network settings by half a second, allowing the web server to respond to the change request with the current network settings. Also call set IP configuration at the end of the board initialization. Inside the set IP configuration function, we need to load the current settings from EEPROM. Then, if the DHCP flag is enabled, we will enable the DHCP client in Mongoose's TCP IP interface and set the IP address, netmask, and gateway address to zero. If the DHCP flag is off, we will disable the DHCP client in Mongoose's TCP IP interface and parse the manually configured IP addresses into the interfaces IP, gateway, and netmask. After reconfiguring the network, we should close all established connections and reset the interfaces status to down to allow it to reinitialize. Mongoose lets us to set up an event handler for the TCP IP interface. This is the purpose of the TCP IP event handler function. It catches the moment when the router assigns the IP address and then copies the obtained addresses from the interface to the network settings structure and then saves them.
rebuild and refresh the device, then reload the dashboard. We can see that the device received its network configuration from DHCP, populated the network setting structure, and stored it. Now let's try using the manual IP configuration. Disable DHCP, keep the net mask and gateway the same, and change the IP address. Click Save. Refresh the dashboard. It won't respond because it's already running on a different IP address. Reboot the board. Point the browser to the new IP address, and you'll see the dashboard. Switch back to DHCP, and you'll notice that the IP address has changed again, reverting to the previous one. Congratulations! We have learned how to store device configuration persistently and how to apply network settings changes on the fly. Hit like and subscribe if you found this useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.